Welcome to Julie Hall Designs. But that's Good morning and welcome to Julie Hall Designs. I hope you're all having a good day. One moment while I get everything together. You might find it's a little bit louder today, which is always a good thing. And that is because we are live from the um, she so stitches retreat please excuse my hair the humidity has absolutely done me in i am so not used to this um but i'm so excited to have you guys here today we are going to show you and i can see lisa callum's there narelle scott's here from uh, south australia and jan van grishen is with us as well and hopefully you can hear all of the machines in the background and I'm going to take you for a walk in a second and show you exactly what these ladies have been working on but today I'm going to show you how I created this Candlewick uh, cushion cover and then did the fringing so it's really just about how to create fringing that's not going to pull away. Have you ever done um, fringing with your machine and as soon as you wash the wash away from the back, everything falls apart. This is not gonna do that because it is held down incredibly securely. The embroidery itself is just made of a couple of different parts. How you put your um, your project together is as always up to you sorry guys that's really not a good look this morning um, but um, I just used a cushion from Kmart because it's the cheapest way to get the um, the internals now the host of our retreat who is Michelle Reynolds Michelle if you could pick up that Logitech there for me yes and say hello that's perfect hi everybody how you going um and now i'm going to get michelle to walk around with me and we're just going to show you what people have been working on this week so yeah no we need that it's always fun when you work out what you actually need to take with you so Let's start. And as always, at least one machine has to go down at a retreat. So we've got the doctors on the phone. Who wants to show off what they've been working on, ladies? All the winter projects. Oh no, your other projects. Oh, so yesterday we did the beautiful square zip box and doesn't it look fantastic Paula also created so we did applique and joining up of designs and she's done this applique across the top of a shirt how gorgeous is that and adding the butterfly at the end was just inspired it just finishes it off Tatiana is making fringing at the moment, which I'm going to show you all how to do. But the colours, I'm just loving how that's all looking. It's just beautiful. <laughs> and we've got Desley, who's doing her candle wicking in two different colours. So Desley's on the 11, Janome 11,000 machine, which means she's got to do it in two different hoopings. So it's always the joy 
of playing around with the software and getting it to that right point. This is gaze and loving the, um, the bright colors. What I'm also loving is look at all these guys who have their projects from previous years. So remember when we did this one, it really is handy for taking to a retreat. And of course, Gay's got her, um, her box project there as well. The lovely Kerry Lynn, black on pink is always fun. And of course, you guys would recognize the notebook. And we did a little bit of embossing on towels as well. And of course, the zip pouch. <laughs> I'm loving seeing all the different colors of the... Um... Now, can I get you to hold maybe that just because my arm's getting really so tired. Didn't realize how big the laptop was. Um, just how different they all look. And the dark purple in the cork is stunning. So I love it when everybody pulls out all of their projects. This one's cats. We've got roots. Oh, and that's such a good daffodil color. That is just lovely. So you're working on your fringing and hopefully you've got your wash away thread. Yes, I have. Oh, yes. Ah. Oh. I didn't even realize. Yep, you're all good. Beautiful examples of the applique. Don't show these two. She doesn't want to be shown either. Okay, who's got anything to show off? Oh, Robin, lovely. And you know what? I think the quilt clips add something to it, Robin. <laughs> but how good does that metallic thread look on the side there? That's the teal metallic. Um, the King Star one that we carry, and it just looks beautiful and loving the flower colors. <laughs> then we've got Rosa's done applique, and she's finished the first of her candle wicking pieces. Now, these ladies have been working since 9 a.m. this morning, so it's okay that they're a little bit ahead of you. Loving it on the yellow, I think that looks really nice. But how great is it? There are 20 plus women in this room and everyone's designs look different. And it's one of the things that I love about going to a retreat. Check this applique out. It was all done by Fran with organza and just multiple layers of organza to give different depths of color. How amazing does that look it really is beautiful and then now see I wouldn't have thought to put it on the pattern but it looks great and you're doing your fringing <gasps> now creativity abounds we've got Kathy making a tote bag and she has, sorry guys, we're just pulling this out. So she's used her applique to make a tote bag. And I'm loving the grass. I think that is just amazing. And of course, the embossed towels. And then we've got another tote bag coming our way. Loving that all of the... Um, pansies are sort of matching up so you've used your templates to do that and then the initials just look gorgeous don't worry about that sound the owner of the machine knows that it makes that sound as much as all of us have just nearly had a heart attack um, but the green cork with the blue um, uh, with the blue thread and the blue zipper just came out beautifully as well so that's what these ladies have been working on 
Thank you so much for letting me show that. And I can see we've got Helen Cassidy with us. Sorry guys. Let me come back and actually set up. No, no, machines running is all good. <laughs> oh God. Okay, we've really got to turn off that picture of me. Let me just see, uh, so I can see Helen Cassidy, uh, Vilma Gonveda from New Zealand. I'm sorry if I've mangled your name. Mary Sendel. Um, Lisa Callum says good morning to everybody. Miss you, Liz. Lindsay Wright. Um, Eloise says hello to her nan, um, who's one of our stitchers. Sharon Margaret Brock, thank you for joining us. Dee Dee, um, thank you for coming along. Okay, so now we're gonna get started. And the joy of all of this stitching is just how quick it really is. So what I've got here, and I can see I've got Bev Lane and Shannon Margaret brought from Wisconsin in the USA. You're probably about the same temperature as we are here. Bloody hot, 26 degrees. <laughs> now, candle wicking is a beautiful technique to do. And um, I'm hoping you can all hear me. And actually, Michelle, if you could do me a favor and go and check on your phone that you can actually hear me talk, that would be wonderful. Oh, hell, 63 degrees. Oh, crap, Fahrenheit. Okay. I'll need to, I'll need to work that out. Um, so, candle wicking is fabulous. I love the fact that it's minimal colors, at least. Um, there are a couple of rules, though. The first rule is that you do not resize. Not for anything. Do we resize? And the reason we don't resize is because it will... Oh, 17, that's cold, that's Canberra weather. Um, <clears throat> the reason we don't resize is because it will just force your machine to knot up. The candle wicks have been designed to create a beautiful um, step in the embroidery without it being, or a beautiful knot without it being too much for the machine. Um, oh, Rhonda, I totally agree. Um, you love candle wicking, you've only ever done it by hand, absolutely. Uh, Rhonda, I am in your poo this week. Kay Hall, thank you very much. Oh, I know, it's, it's um, such a beautiful retreat. Uh, and good morning to Jeanette Watchhorn. Um, but, and candle wicking, I used to do it by hand. I bought so many kits. I've done quilts for, um, for nieces over the years. And it was one of those things that I really wanted to try and create into machine embroidery. And I'm sorry, we've got somebody now checking out, um, doing, um, doing mowing. So if you hear that in the background, so what I've got in the hoop is tearaway stabilizer and I have a layer of embroiderer's felt. The embroiderer's felt just gives something for the design to stitch around. Um, Rhonda Burnett, you are asking the same question as my husband keeps on um, asking. I know I should do it, um, have a retreat in Canberra. Dee Dee's got visitors, lucky lady. Um, so, first thing we're going to do is we are going to slow our machine down. The reason we want to do this is because it's doing a lot of stitching in a single place. The faster you make it, the less precise each stitch has the ability to be. So, even though what you see here on mine is quite fast 
you want to slow it down. Um, and I've been stitching on between four and five hundred. Um, so Shannon's asking, when doing this kind of stitching, would I treat it like a dense design stitch out? Pretty well. They do have a lot of stitches in them. The, um, the main daffodil that we're stitching out at the moment has about 16,000 stitches um, from what I can see on the machine next to me. Uh, Rhonda, fantastic question. I, um, so Quilters Felt, I've heard it called Parlon um, in Spotlight. I sell the Quilters Felt, or embroider, sorry, Embroiderer's Felt. Um, and I will post a link to it. Let me just come through. Okay, Marilyn's asking, do you need a special candle wicking foot? No, just your regular embroidery foot. You do not need anything special. Now, if you are an embroidery only user, then what you are going to want to do is, uh, sorry, embroidery only machine user, what you are going to want to do is just make sure that your foot is high enough or put on a spring form foot onto your machine. So you might not be um, familiar with um, with this, but certainly on the Genome machines, you can get a um, you can get the spring motion foot, and I'm just going to try and find. Um, so it's not Pelham. Pelham falls apart a little bit too easily. So this is thinner, but it is more held together like a piece of felt. And um, so yes, I've seen it called Carlon. Um, Spotlight do sell it, but their roll is 90 centimeters wide and they charge like a wounded bull. Um, the one that I sell, um, and look, I know a couple of other cook shops sell it as well, is much um, wider. So mine's 150 wide and I charge 10 bucks a meter. Pretty well, I'm using Quilter's Muslin, or, or I call it Seeded Homespun. But whatever you want to call the fabric that I'm using. And I've just done a color sort on the machine to say I want it all in the one hoop. So it has been just, for a Canberran, it has been stunning weather here. We have had um, a little bit of rain, but the sun is shining now. It's probably going to be steamy as by this afternoon. But, oh my heavens. Um, you know, going from such a hot place. Oh, Shannon, fantastic question. Which hoop am I using? No, it's not that sexy ass new Genomi one. Um, it is the um, the, G, the Genomi GR hoop, which is an 9 by 12 inch hoop, but the design is not that big. The design is 8 by 11. Um, I actually did, I recorded last week after our class, I recorded a couple of new um, um, question of the week videos that I've been meaning to do forever. Um, it's and one of them is why you shouldn't resize most designs. So that one's coming up. Okay. 
So Ron was saying it's a good price. Yes, it is a good price. You think it might be similar to Battleizer? Not Battleizer. It's, it's the same thickness as Battleizer, but it's soft like a piece of fur. So great description. Ooh, yes. Always good going and um, borrowing things from the parents. And I can see we've got Joni Buckman joining us as well. Thank you for joining us. So my darling family, I left at home in the cold. Um, and I call every night and tell them how hot it is. And that, you know, I've had to put the air con on before I've gone to bed and, and things like that. Because, you know, that's just what you do when you're in a nice warm climate. Um, and your family's got the heater and the um, fireplace going. But I am very, very happy and blessed that I've been able to come up and do this because it's actually shown me that after getting over the um, the cancer and the COVID, well, after finishing the cancer um, and getting over the COVID, I am actually in a place where I can um, where I can do something. Now, is Fran still with us? Ah, Francis. We want to check out your shirt a little bit more, darling. Okay, Rhonda, fantastic question. What type of stabiliser would you use on the shirt that we showed? And I'll bring you up and give you a better... Um, I'll bring Francis over here and we'll do a, um, a bigger build out into, um, into what she's wearing. She's just holding one of the other um, stitches with some... Um, with some brother machine stuff but we've all been incredibly spoiled as well as getting all of our meals provided um, we've got a um, and all these ladies bring their lollies with them it's amazing to watch you should see them they are all unpacking I could take you around the back of all their guests I have never seen so many women bring so much stuff um, but they even organised for a fabric shop to come out. Could you pass me that camera, though? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come through and we're going to do a little bit closer drill down on Francis's shirt. So, what you can see here, and what stabiliser did you use on that, doll? Yeah, just um, a tearaway? Tear away, yeah. So, it's a, it's a cotton shirt. But there is no stretch to it. No. 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 There's no stretch. If sh there had been stretch to the shirt, I would have recommended that you use a cutaway. Yeah. Um, but because it's that three, and it's a beautiful thick cotton, yes. which is difficult to find these days. Yeah. Um, this is a Kmart or Big W shirt. Wow. So, what we've got? Excuse me while I put my hand up your shirt. <laughs> You can go home telling stories tonight. <laughs> um, and it's just organza. I never would have thought. So that's one layer where you've got your finger. And then this is two layers. I think that's three layers because I wanted to hide, hide, hide the green from the stem underneath. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, just so it's the same colour. Yeah. And I can see here, you've got one layer up the top. And two on the I other. reckon that's two and I reckon that one's three. No. No? Yes. Both of them is one and two. So okay. that, that first one, that's one, the other side's two. Okay. And then the top one, they're different, um, two different colours. Yeah. So, and then one and two. The light one is one and the dark one is two. So the lightest one is one there. Yes. The next darkest is two and that centrepiece is about is, four. Okay. Mm. And how gorgeous. And I just love that it's, it's yeah, subtle. So it's, only, it's, it's just three, mm. three colours are just... More and that's deep, 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 yeah. Deep, yeah. So that's then just all of the shirt. Like she hasn't gone overboard and done right no. the way around or anything. But it's no. just, just beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Everybody's loving it. <laughs> okay, let's come back. And 
see what we are up there. Okay, Shannon, fabric prep before. So I haven't put any fusible backing on. Um, look, I am a little bit of a lazy girl stitcher. I love my tear away for basic embroidery. Um, and it covers probably 90% of what I do. Instead of doing an iron on, I've used the embroiderer's felt. And you can get fusible embroiderer's felt. I don't sell the fusible one because I don't like putting extra glues around my needles and things. Um, and when I need it fusible, I just use a little bit of basting spray. So, um, the only other prep that I did was I ironed my fabric. And the, the, so, my embroiderer's felt is my fusible backing in this case. Okay, Shannon said craft has been their rooms, not suitcases. These ones do. It's, I mean, I, I turn up with a, um, um, you know, with enough changes of clothes for the morning or for the day, week that I'm here. And um, I have um, half my suitcase full of stock. These, these women bring their cars full. It's so fun to watch them all unpack it. But think of poor Dorothy. Dorothy is our... <laughs> Dorothy is the poor lady who machine had to be the one that was going to have an issue. So... She's sitting here. It's kind of just cracked out a bit. Um, and we're waiting on a call on whether there's something that we can do from here or whether it has to go to the surgeon itself. Um, one of the things, and it was quite, um, was quite interesting when Edward and I were driving home from Melbourne for Mother's Day, which is for us a seven hour drive. Um, and I love talking in the car because he has to answer me. It's kind of like you're in a you're in a single space. He can't avoid me. Um, and I was I was actually complaining about the cost of servicing and how much it's gone up. And it got us talking. And another um, video that I've recorded is the difference between servicing your machine and fixing your machine um, and how as much as we would like it to be different the, um, the service technicians are not mind readers or psychic and we have to take video, um, we have to give them complete notes and it was it was great yesterday um, one of the ladies here with a genomic it was, we were changing the foot and it was just playing up, just that little bit. So, I, I tried to, uh, the plate. So I tried to fix it. I was of no good whatsoever. Um, and an error message kept on coming up. So I got out my phone and I set the video up. So what, um, and I just took a 15 second video so that I could show the dealer what was happening. And from that, they were able to diagnose what was happening and suggest to me how I could fix it while we were here. Now, they're still suggesting that she goes and sees her local dealer, um, but at least we've got the machine working for the week. So, Shannon's asking, how do, how do we do services here? Locally, we have to put down, so in the US, they have to put down a hundred and then what they have to do comes off the 100 deposit. Yeah. Um, servicing really has gone up and it so depends on the dealer itself. There is a, I know a couple of people in Melbourne have been telling me, which is a metropolitan city in Australia, um, 
have been telling me that their service, so when you think of your yearly service, um, is a um, flat rate of $250. And whilst that seems Initially, I like gasp and think, oh, $250, what are you doing? <clears throat> when you think about it, um, if I was a contractor working, I would be charging around two to $300 an hour um, for, that. that's the going rate for contractors within the government. So, you're looking at about an hour, two hours work. It, it is understandable where it comes from. What I then get worried about is when I, um, when you've got an actual issue, and this is why I do the video thing, because I don't want somebody looking around for four hours trying to find the issue at $200 an hour. Um, Yeah, that's, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Because I started um, embroidery 22 years ago, machine embroidery, about 22 years ago, um, servicing was a hell of a lot cheaper. And I think we get it in our mind that that's the price that it should be. So it just wigs us out and we're not used to change. Um, Okay, coming up. And I love the satin that I've included in this one as well. It just makes such a, um, just adds that lusciousness to it. Um, and one of the things that I love about my candle wicking stitch is that it is textured. So it really is that beautiful, um, run it over your fingers sort of a thing. Now, I've just realised what I can do is, and Diane Cathy, you're going to love me here. <clears throat> oh yes, I could see this on a table runner. The yeah, problem is these ladies are doing other table runner projects. And I will show you their other projects soon. But when I said how much they all bring, look at this. So as well as their machines, they've got crates of threads. They've got, I, I, I would hate to think of how empty some of your sewing rooms are ladies. Um, it is just amazing. Now, I've also been incredibly spoiled um, and given a couple of gifts as I came up here. And after we finish the stitching, I'll show you those as well. Okay, oh, good one. What are the popular brands of embroidery machines? But for, it's a it's a really interesting one. So I know in America you guys have Baby Lock and that's a big brand. We don't have Baby Lock for embroidery machines. We have the Brothers. Um, in this retreat, there is a mix of Genome machines. Back. There's three brothers and there's one Benina. Um, I, th I think it really comes down to Shannon, and well, for me personally, anyway, it comes down to what you're used to. I was always a um, I was always a Genoma girl. Okay, so we've finished our main embroidery 
and we're going to come on <clears throat> now I've got wash away thread in my bobbin only regular embroidery thread in the top can I show the ladies your projects that you're going to do with them as well um, so regular embroidery thread in the top and for this first colorway of the fringing because the fringing is two colors it is wash away thread in the bobbin and that is going to allow us to do our fringing Yes. I think the food cover is going to be incredibly popular. Michelle has made a domed fruit cover. Fruit cover. Food cover. Um, well, it's, it's yeah. after I do the stitching, yeah. Um, so, yes, I can explain why we have wash away in the bobbin. Because we are going to wash it away and it gives us our, that look of the fringing. Um, it allows the, the thread to come up and be um, floopy. Yeah, the important words. Floopy is an you know, incredibly, you know, very, very well used word. So, and you can see here, none of this stitching is difficult. Um, it is all just basic stitching. What I have done, so when you, when you see and purchase these designs, you'll see you get the fringing and then you get the panel. I loaded into my machine because I've got that larger hoop on, that nine by 12. Um, oh my God, you just said a terrible word there, Shannon. You've sworn, hand wind, hell no. Wash away thread, yep, just wind a bobbin as per normal. Uh, the only thing is, keep your wash away thread in a, um, in a Ziploc bag. So the stitching itself is really, really easy. But no, Shannon, I don't like hand stitching. I don't like hand winding anything. No, no, no. We're gonna we're gonna make it a lot nicer than that for you. And look, you can use normal thread, but it makes it just a lot more difficult in your, like in your bobbin. And you can see why I sped this bit up, because you can imagine how boring this bit of stitching is. But the cream on cream looks beautiful. <laughs> oh, Shannon, I'm so pleased you're um, teaching your daughter how to sew. So many, and look, I've tried with mine. My daughters are now 16. Um, they have no interest in... Um, in sewing um, and 
yeah, it's it's a really tough one. Um, so I'm so pleased that your daughter's doing that with you. You can sit down and run that there, Dorothy. Okay. Now I did see a design the other day that was um, that was the fringing design used as eyelashes. And I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, my, my daughters will do a little bit of embroidery if it suits them. Um, but yeah, there's been no real interest. Okay. And then we go when we do the second side. Now. Okay. So once we've done that, I am using oh I think it's a Tajima thread. Because it was a massive spool, it's a massive spool of thread. Um, I think it's a Tajima that I bought at a craft show. Okay, so now we come through <coughs> and we've changed our bobbin. So it's using a real bobbin thread, um, or standard bobbin thread. And this is what holds the fringing together. Um, and Shannon, that was way more um, good luck than good management. So you can see it's stitching down and it's going to hold down that fringing. And once we've finished stitching, I'm going to show you how I've cut it away and we've then removed the wash away. Anybody else had a good week? Anybody been working on any good projects? Quilt ladies are always good. <laughs> so, because I was too lazy to, um, to stitch these sides differently, what I've done is I put it in the software of the machine. So that I could do both layers of fringing, or both sides of fringing at once. And then I could also do this side panel. If your machine is not that, if you don't have that width of machine, don't stress, just do it in two separate pieces. Oh, 
I am having a lovely time in Yapoon. It is a little bit, um, um, the air is a little bit dense for, um, <coughs> um, for my lungs, but that's, it's been all good. And you can see then how the candle wicking comes along as well. And I can see we've got Kim, Kim Macon joining us from Swan Hill. Thank you very much. I could take a photo over here, ladies. How many women did you take to fix the sewing machine? So far, we've got three lovely women. Trying to work out Dorothy's machine. Okay. We'll do the last side. Now, wash away thread. Uh, sorry, wash away stabilizer. Two layers in the hoop for when we are doing the tassels. <clears throat> um, up here in the humidity, we can feel that wash away going almost limp as we go, um, just even as we do the stitching. It's very interesting to see. Oh my God, Louise. Louise is my next door neighbor. Oh, is my over the back neighbor. And she just visited her neighbors. They've got a possum, mice and rat plague, but her home's clear. Um, we've, definitely, we've definitely got mice but um, we've been lucky so far and I plan on keeping it that way with the rest. Okay, so this is my two layers of wash away stabilizer. You don't wanna use the one that looks like cling film because it just does not have the ability to work the same way. Mm -mm. And I've got an embroidery thread top and bottom. Now I actually used a different color so that my tassel would be multicolored, just for something different. Uh, yes, Kay, that is the 300 by 230 hoop. Uh, so, oh no, this little hoop is the FA, FA 40. Because um, I'm only doing this tiny, tiny little. And I can still get four of these um, in here. I know, it's one that we never use. It's a great one for doing socks. Let me come back here. Oops. Um, it's a great... Um, hoop for doing socks and surprisingly enough a couple of people have actually asked um, this week at this retreat about doing socks so is that something that anybody would like to do or is interested in seeing what they can do with that tiny little hoop now I'm gonna come around and just switch cameras so give me just two seconds because what I want to show you is what we do next. What we do next is arrange ourselves a little bit better, ideally. Okay. Now, I told you I was quite blessed. 
by a couple of the lovely ladies here. Check out the mug rug that I got. Isn't that just beautiful? Um, and please don't get me wrong, I do not expect gifts when I, um, when I teach. Now, you guys know that we've done the rope baskets. How cool does this look? It's got a lid on it and everything. Just adoring. And the retreat themselves gave me this beautiful wooden sign. Now, one of the ladies here, her son-in-law makes it for them. Um, and you can have it created for you with your name put in here as well. So I will get a link so that if anybody wants these beautiful cut out um, sewing room design, um, wooden plaques, they can order them. Okay, so what I want to show you next, and I can see we've got Barbara Leggett. The last time I did socks, I'm just looking at the responses. Um, so the last time I did socks was when the, sorry, I'm gonna get my. Okay, sorry for that. Um, was when my daughters were in nappies. So what we've got now, and I'm going to change the camera over. So I've got my embroidered panel, all well and good. Then I've got the fringing. Now the wash away thread is a little bit thicker, so it feels a little bit thicker, but the other thing I want you to notice, and you, you would have already noticed this, when you do a satin stitch, remember how a lot of that um, embroidery thread comes up as well. What we want to do is to make sure that our fringing is coming up nicely. My camera's not sure what it's doing here. What we're going to do is take a curved pair of scissors. This is the side where you can see we've done regular stitching to hold all of this fringe down. All I'm going to do is cut. Make sure you don't cut your fabric. But I just want to cut straight and I'm going to end up cutting off um, about, you know, maybe a millimetre or two of my satiny threads that have come out but it's going to make it look so much better as we go through because you'll have a straight edge and you won't have to trim okay so after that and I'm just going to see which edge I pulled up there. You can actually come through and see the first part of your fringing coming apart. Now, what you will notice is that because it's a thick fringing, it's done in two segments. The way we get rid of that second line is when we wash the project and the thread, the wash away thread disappears. So we are um, put to put your project together. Now I don't wash anything away until the project is together. So the next thing that I've done is I've trimmed my block and this can be whatever size you need but mine was about um, 10 by 12. I found this fabric in my mum's stash and I absolutely loved it 
But then I remembered after I'd sewed it, what a complete pain in the neck it is for coming apart. So do be careful on whether or not you want to use it. When you're joining your fringe, and sorry, I'm trying to work out the best way to do the camera here and not tick you guys off at the same time. Okay. You want to cut a quarter inch from this heavy stitching line. And that's going to be the seam that you join so that you just cover that up and it gives another row of stitching protection. And that is going to then secure that fabric. Once you've stitched your, um, your tassels and you put your project together, everything's still got the wash away, even the tassels, because we haven't washed them away. We have only, um, so they've still got all their stabilizer on them. Once you've finished your project and joined it all together, just chuck it in the wash. And what you will get out is perfect, beautiful fringing and tassels. Okay. Now, so what are we thinking, guys? Is candle wicking and fringing something that you would give a go to? Um, Jane saying she embroidered her socks with flowers to make, make it easier to see which are hubbies. Yep. Uh, plus, it makes it easier to keep in pairs. Absolutely. Um, so, um, so, no, I think that's a great um, project. And the joy of it is it's something different. Now, I told you I'd show you what these guys are going to be working on this week. This is a food cover or really ugly hat. Um, it's made out of, it feels like a fly mesh. Um, and once again, if this is something that people are interested in, um, I will see if Michelle will allow me to videotape this um, and share it with you guys. I know there's boning involved. Um, I don't know anything else. They are also doing... And... Ah, oh, here we go. They're also doing beautiful cutwork pillowcases, um, which just look lovely. And that's a second one there. And they're doing 3D flowers. So it's one of those things that I haven't done a lot with, um, but it has inspired me. I've got a black hat at home and I'm thinking we might have to do some nice big 3D flowers and look at how we can use those. Uh, and that is in a beautiful, I'll just try and, beautiful Christmas runner. So these ladies here are certainly going to have enough to do. Um, so, as always, thank you so much for spending time with me. I really do appreciate it. As always, feel free to send me any questions that you might have. Um, I'm just making, just checking to make sure there's no other questions there yet. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you on Thursday night and I'll hopefully I'll have some more stuff to show you. So until then, 